words of power because we are kings and our words matter. In every commandment, you see the reflection of God. His nature, his character is seen in that. So God gave the Ten Commandments to show himself. And not only to show himself, but also to show to man through that, that man is a sinner. Yes, that he panted for the water so so long it after thee you alone are my heart's desire and I long to worship thee as the deer as the deer planted the water so much, so long it passes So long is after you, Lord. You alone. You alone. You alone. We long to worship you. Romans chapter 13, verse 8 to 10 once again. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for he who loves another has fulfilled the law. For the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, are all summed up in this saying, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. We're going to look at this passage one more time. Um, this is a wonderful passage where Paul puts this matter of loving one another in a very uh, amazing way here. We looked at 1 John, covered various passages. Now we are into Paul. 
and what he says about loving one another because we are talking about walking in love in this series. Now look at the very interesting way he puts it. The first week we talked about verse 8 where he says, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. In other words, we have a lot of debt that we pay routinely and regularly. Every month we pay our bills. We owe money to so many uh, things, you know, house, car, and so on. These payments are due. So we keep paying our dues. And, but one day it comes to an end. They're all for a specified time. But this debt of love is timeless. It is for all eternity. You keep on loving, you owe this thing, this love to one another, and you will owe it today, tomorrow, and every day, throughout this life and throughout all eternity. You will owe one another only in love you should owe anything. So he puts it in a very interesting way. You'll finish paying all the debts, but this debt you will never finish paying. This is something that will be always outstanding. It will always be due, he says. And then we looked at this whole thing about how he mentions various commandments, like you shall not commit adultery, not commit murder, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not covet. And if there is any other commandment, he says, they're all summed up in this one saying, he says. Namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. We looked at it last week, and we showed you how in this one saying, you shall love your neighbor as yourself, all the law is, or the Ten Commandments is summed up, how that is possible. I showed you how this is something that is mentioned in Leviticus 19.18 and showed you how in the Old Testament itself, they have been stating the entire law, the Ten Commandments, in one statement. Uh, they have learned to summarize it. Instead of stating all the Ten all the time, they have learned to put it in one line. Love your neighbor as yourself. That covers all the commandments. That is already, that was already there in the Old, Old Testament. Now when Jesus came along, he takes that Leviticus 19, 18, where it says, love your neighbor as yourself and uh, uses it when he was asked questions about the law he says do what is written in the law if you love your neighbor as yourself that will cover all the law that's the way he uses it twice he uses it i showed you and twice paul uses it once in romans 13 8 and then in galatians chapter 4 and then james uses it in james chapter 2 verse 8 where he calls it the royal law Keep refers to Leviticus 19.18, love your neighbor as yourself. And he says, that's a royal law. Why it's a royal law? It's a royal law because it comes from, with the authority and seal of this king, Jesus, of the kingdom of God. This is a royal, in our kingdom, the kingdom of God in which we live, this is the law. This law covers all the laws. So James also recognizes it. So Paul and John and James and Jesus and all these people are talking about the same thing. You know, love your neighbor as yourself as representing the entire law. That's a good way to summarize all the law in one line. So we saw that. But yesterday I showed you one particular thing. That is the, uh, not yesterday, the last week. I showed you one particular thing about this passage. That is, a lot of people take this line, this statement, love your neighbor as yourself, and uh, interpret it wrongly or understand it wrongly, use it wrongly. They say, well, then that's all matters. It doesn't matter whether you believe in God or not. Put God aside or put him later. The prominent thing must be or the number one thing must be you love your neighbor as yourself because this covers all the law. If you do this, it covers everything. Therefore, let's get rid of everything else. Forget even about God, whether there is a God or not. Let's talk about it later. Let's not bother with it. Let's love one another. And it sounds nice, but I showed you how the natural man, when I say natural man, the unsaved man, the man as he is born in this world before his salvation, the natural man is incapable of doing what this commandment says, that is, love your neighbor as yourself. He's incapable, in other words, of fulfilling the law, the Ten Commandments at all. 
If he is not able to fulfill this, then he is not able to fulfill the Ten Commandments. So, if he fulfills it, then he has fulfilled all the Ten Commandments. So, the natural man I showed you, I showed you the inability of the natural man to fulfill this commandment, loving your neighbor as yourself, because sin has damaged him terribly. Sin has brought in such selfishness that he knows how to love himself, but he does not, he is not capable of loving others. That's the condition and state in which all human beings are. This is a damage that was caused in every soul of every man, that we have become so selfish and selfishly motivated, self-centered in our lives through sin, that just to reorient ourselves to any other kind of life itself takes a long time. Uh, it, it, it is not possible naturally. You have, to, you, have, you have to literally have a brand new life, become a new creation in order for that to be possible. So we showed you the inability of the natural man to do what it says. It's not as easy as you think or it's not as easy as people think. Because they say, well, let's love one another. It's very simple. Just love one another. Well, it's not simple because man is not able to love one another. That's the problem. Why? Because man knows how to love himself, but does not know how to love another like himself. Look how Jesus puts it, and look how the Old Testament summarizes the law. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. It does not say, love your neighbor. It says, love your neighbor as yourself. It tells you how to love your neighbor. Love him as yourself. Now, why does it put it like that? Because, you see, when you, it, it means this. Have you noticed sometimes when it's your child that's done the wrong thing, you're always very soft, you know? I've heard some parents talk about their son drinking or something like that. They'll say, he's actually a very nice boy. See how nice they are? He's actually a nice kid, Pastor. He's a wonderful kid. He's a good student, he does everything, a very disciplined, very obedient boy. But he joined with this other fellow from the next street, you see. That is a rogue there. And that fellow took him along with him and took him to these bars and ruined him. And that's how this boy started drinking. That boy, he, that family is very bad. His father drinks, his, uh, everybody drinks, uncle drinks, and you know they have drinking parties in their house, and they do this, they do that. And this boy somehow got in with that guy, and now he started drinking. But actually, this boy is a good boy. Now, if the same thing, see, see how you're talking about the other guy, and how you talk about your own son, that's why God says, love your neighbor as yourself. In other words, talk about him as softly as you talk about your son. You're very nice about your kids. You're very careful to, you know, use words uh, that will not damage the reputation of your child, which is good. You should not. You know, that's good that you care about your child and love your child and, and you don't want to talk anything bad and ruin his reputation in any way. But do the same thing with, about others. Love your neighbor as your self. Have you ever noticed that we are always harsh when we talk about others? We are very soft when we talk about ourselves. When we make a mistake, we say, it is something that happened because I was a little careless. It's a small thing. Don't take it as anything big. But if the same thing some other guy did, we make a big deal out of it. We blow it out of proportion. You know, we look at it with magnifying lenses and, and we magnify it a thousand times more. Sometimes people are terrible when, when they talk about others. The same thing happens to them. They do the same thing. They will turn around and talk about it as if it's nothing. It was just a mistake. Have you ever noticed that? Everybody's awful quiet today. <laughs> I think the message is getting very... There's a preacher that I used to know, Brother Kenneth Hagin used to say, don't preach me down just because I'm preaching so good. Don't shout me down just because I'm preaching so good, he said. Well, this is serious. Love your neighbor as yourself means deal with your neighbor as you would deal with yourself. 
Have you ever felt like, uh, you know, some people talk about your children or something, you feel like saying to them, hey, please, deal, think of your child, my child as your child. Talk about, when you talk about him or her, think about him or her like your child and talk about him in that way or her in that way. Don't, don't consider this child as someone else. Immediately the whole equation changes. When, they, when you think of another man's child as your own child and care about that child's reputation, that child's name and all of that, immediately when you think of it as your child, everything changes. That's what the Bible is saying. Saying, love your neighbor as yourself. But it's not as simple as we think. By nature, we are so selfish. We are good to ourselves and our own, but very harsh to others because that's the way we are. Uh, sin has made us. Sin has damaged us, ruined us, and uh, rendered us like this. We are in this condition now that uh, we talk good things about ourselves, we talk bad things about others. It just comes so naturally, and that's the way things are. But let's look at it. Yes, last week I showed you the inability of the natural man to do this. It's not as easy as you think. Love your neighbor as yourself is not possible for a natural man, a sinful man who is not saved. It's not possible. Now today I want to show you how that inability is changed, how God gives us the ability to love one another. That's what I want to look at today, how God gives us the ability to love one another. Now, there is only one way in which anybody can love his neighbor as himself. That is to see himself in the light of how God sees him, see himself through, in and through Christ, really. That is the only way a man can love his neighbor as, you, uh, as himself. Every Christian need to, needs to understand this, I think. We need to have a totally different outlook. Our outlook has to change. It is not enough that we are born again, that is part of it, but then our outlook also has to change. We need to see ourselves in the light of how God sees us totally from the beginning to the end. Then only we'll be able to love another as we love ourselves. So let's look at this. Man really must understand himself, and you cannot understand yourself unless you come before God's presence. You cannot understand yourself without God. You take God out of the equation, you don't know who you are. Why? Because you and I are created in the image and likeness of God. If you are made like God, then if you want to know who you are or what kind of a person you are, if you want to understand yourself, since you're made in the image and likeness of God, you need to look at God, because that is what will inform you about what you are made of. If you understand God, then you will understand yourself because you are made like God in his image and likeness. Romans chapter one is a very interesting chapter. It talks the whole, the essence of Romans chapter one is this, that they got out of contact with God. The people became sinners. They got out of contact with God, fell out of relationship with God. And as a result, the knowledge of God was gone. And the knowledge, since the knowledge of God was not there, then it resulted in a number of things. One is idol worship. They started, you know, God made them in his image. Now they started making God in their own image. You know. The whole thing started changing because they didn't know who they are. They didn't know what the world is. They, they didn't know how to worship. They didn't know who God is. They don't know nothing because the problem starts with not knowing God. When they don't know God, then they try to imagine what God will be like. And the best they could come up with, they could come up with, the, with this thing, that God is something like them. So we have all these mythological stories about, you know, uh, God being just like them, you know. So this is the problem. It is starting with a lack of knowledge of God. That results in a number of things, starting with the worship of God. Worship changes. They worship the creature rather than the creator um, because they don't know the creator now. They just have to imagine. And they imagined, and they imagined four-footed beasts and birds and, and all kinds of images and all kinds of things. That, that's the best they could come up with. 
Their imagination is working. They don't know who God is. They've lost touch with God. They don't understand God. So they came up with their own concept of God. That's how everything came. Then they started imagining about how we ought to live. They lost any, they lost any idea of, of what, how they ought to live, what life ought to be like. So they started using their bodies in the wrong way. The Bible talks about how they live very morally and uh, live against nature. They use their bodies against nature and uh, went wrong totally. All kinds of perversions and, uh, and activities that are against nature uh, that came along as a result of losing contact with God. The whole confusion about who I am and how I ought to live comes when I lose contact with God. I don't know who God is, therefore I don't know who I am. That's the problem. That is, that is how the Romans chapter 1 goes. Romans chapter 1 is a terrific chapter. I preached on it verse by verse many years ago. Uh, it's an amazing chapter that tells us what the problem is with the world and with people today. Why people are like they are today. Why they do things the way they do things. No. Why they behave like that. Why they go after certain things. Why they believe certain philosophies and why they believe certain things. It, the fundamental thing is they've lost contact with God. They have no idea of what God looks like, what God is like. Lost contact with God, so they have lost the entire idea of worship, of the true and living God. The entire idea of moral living is lost. Everything is lost. So they think whatever you feel, you do it because that must be there because God has put it there. So let's behave the way we feel, you know. That's the that's their conclusion they come to. And that is what produced a society that was filled with immorality and all kinds of uh, disorder. All right. Now, so in order to understand ourselves, we need to come before God. Only in the presence of God can I truly have an understanding of myself. In order to provide it in that society where everybody was lost, everybody was in a sinful condition after Adam sinned, God gave the law. Under Moses, God gave the law. You know why God gave the law? God gave the law because in that society where people are lost, they don't know the way, they don't know God, they needed to have something whereby they can understand God, who God is. The law, the Ten Commandments, were a perfect reflection of God's love and God's character and, uh, and God as He is. It shows who God is. God is love. The Ten Commandments are about the God who is love. God is truth. The Ten Commandments are about a God who is truth. He is perfect in love. He is perfect in truth. So the Ten Commandments are a perfect reflection of that God. It is supposed to reflect God to them. When they looked at the Ten Commandments, they can see God. It came from God. This is what God is. This is what God is not some made-up image. God is not something that you built or you made. No, God is a spirit. Therefore, you can't just worship any, any, anything else. You've got to worship God in the spirit. This is God. In every commandment, you see the reflection of God. His nature, his character is seen in that. So God gave the Ten Commandments to show himself. And not only to show himself, but also to show to man through that, that man is a sinner. That man is not right now in the image and likeness of God that God created him. Something has gone wrong with man. That something is missing in man. Something has gone really terribly wrong with man. That can be seen only through the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments was never given so that people can be justified and made righteous through it. The Ten Commandments were never given so that people can follow it and come to God and with a, with a report card saying, I got 100% marks. So, you know, sign over here and, pie and let me into heaven. It was never given that for, for that purpose because no one, not one human being 
can fulfill what is written in the Ten Commandments. Just clap our hands. Jesus is alive. I know he's rescued my soul. His blood is covered. Your living 